Hey guys, it's Danny. I'm not in front of my tanks right now. I'm still trying to figure out how to move the lights over and just find a way to film. But anyway, the topic of today doesn't necessarily need me to be in front of my tanks. I'm not doing maintenance. But what I wanted to talk to you guys about is a discovery that I made in one of my shrimp tanks, in my wonderful black crystal shrimps tank. I found something that gives me the heebie-jeebies and made me think of totally redoing that tank. And I wanted to share it with you because if you don't know, it exists. Well, I want you to know it exists and I want you to take action immediately. So what I found in my tank is a damselfly larvae. It's really cute and dragonflies and damselflies are really cute. I really love them. They look like butterflies. But if you have a larvae in your tank, it's not that cute, trust me, because Here's the fun fact about them. They are strictly carnivorous, which means they will not feed on the plants you have in your tank, but rather the inhabitants of your tanks. Small fish and best of all, quotation marks, shrimps, especially shrimplets. And that's exactly what the damselfly larvae that I found in my tank fed on, the tiny little shrimps. But how do they get in the tank in the first place? Did I have some dragonflies coming out the window and depositing some eggs? No. Most likely they come on plants. If you didn't know, damselfly and dragonfly, they lay their eggs in water, not in the air. Luckily for us, many of the plants we use in aquariums are actually grown immersed, meaning in the air, not under water. And most reputable nurseries actually grow their plants in this matter because, well, we can avoid a lot of complications and pathogens and insects, from algae to damselfly larvae. And especially if you purchase your plants in the in vitro cups, which have been obtained through tissue culture, Tropica calls them one to grow. I think Donerla is an in vitro cup. I'm not entirely sure. If they are sealed, you can rest assured that the chances of getting pests and pathogens are very, very slim. However, there are plants in the hobby that cannot be grown immersed. Plants like Valisneria, Kabamba, Egeria, or Lodia. I'm not entirely sure what the difference between those two is. These are plants which are strictly aquatic and they do not grow immersed whatsoever. So nurseries are indeed forced to grow them in water. Now, if the nursery doesn't do a good job in preventing insects from entering the room where these plants are grown, well, we can have surprises, can't we? And if you remember, if you've watched the video of me setting up the crystal tank, what did I use in there? A kabamba. And funnily enough, that was the only new plant in the tank. Everything else was reused from other setups or borrowed from other tanks. There was no other plant that was grown submersed or that was new. The kabamba was the only one and it kind of fits the description of the culprit, right? It's an aquatic plant, it's new, hence it probably introduced some damselfly eggs into my aquarium. And it took a little bit of time for them to hatch, but inevitably they did. And you guys, I found a few damselfly larvae. The biggest one is the one that I'm gonna show you on the screen. It was around one and a half centimeters at this point. But as I read, they can even grow up to seven centimeters in length. Can you imagine what type of fish they can hunt? I would say easily they can go for any type of very young fish such as young guppies and life bearers, maybe even fully mature endlers or even green neons, and obviously defenseless shrimps, which guess what? We're the only inhabitants of that tank, apart from the autosynclus fish, which I don't think they were in danger. They were quite big, but definitely these damselfly larvae had no predators in that tank. Now, if you have a community tank with all sorts of fish, maybe you will not have issues. And I did find one single damselfly many years ago, but at the time I had German rams in my tank and you guys know them. Oh, they like to hunt. So I didn't have issues with these larvae in the past, but being that this is almost strictly a shrimp tank, there was nothing to prey on the damselfly. So they had free reign to eat as many baby shrimplets as they wanted to. And I'm sure they have because you don't reach that size unless you eat something, right? I was wondering what was happening with my shrimps. So how can we fight them? Well, first of all, prevention. It is a very good idea 
to make sure you purchase your plants from reputable sources. And if possible, if you can use plants that have been grown immersed, that's even better. But there will be plants which will have to be grown underwater. Case in which, again, buying from a reputable source will be very helpful. But one thing that people do, I don't do it. I'm just telling you what some people do is a bleach dip. You prepare a solution of 19 parts water and one part bleach, if I'm not mistaken. You should really Google this because I'm not talking from experience. And that's always sketchy waters when I'm not talking from experience. But yes, people do do bleach dips or baths in order to get rid of potential pathogens and even algae. I cannot tell you if it is efficient or the degree of efficacy because I don't do it myself. But just so you know, people do it, research it more, see how it's done and see if this is something for you or it isn't. As for substances in the water, I don't think we should act, especially if we have crustaceans and shrimps, because typically these solutions will have copper, probably. So by eradicating the pest, we might also eradicate snails and shrimps and maybe we don't want that. If you have a small tank, I think it would be fairly easy to just hunt them down. It's exactly what I did. I removed the kabamba completely and I just started to keep an eye on that tank and I removed as many as I could. And for a week and a half now, I don't see any more, which is good, but I'm still keeping an eye on that tank. But my tank is tiny, it was easy to manage. If you have a big tank, what I would do is try to find a predatory fish, which will not necessarily endanger other fish you might have there. Rams, I think are perfect, maybe a betta. Any fish that is predatory and is large enough to catch the tiny larvae. And of course, if you can keep an eye on your tank, that would be ideal as well. Many people suggest on the internet that you just restart the tank. That might be a solution depending on the severity of the infestation. It really is up to you. But at this point, I personally, I would not advise to go for substances because typically they will damage other things in the tank as well. If possible, try to prevent them. That's the best thing to do. But if you already have them, hunt them down. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing now. I have the net ready by the tank. And when I see something, I just scoop it out. Thankfully, they're not super, super fast. So I, I can scoop them out. And thankfully I have a small tank. But oh brother, uh, yeah, it has been a treat to be worried about my black crystal shrimps these days. And yes, I am sarcastic. So. Now that you know about it, now that you know what to look for, if you ever see it, panic. No, don't panic, uh, but just take action as soon as you can, because the more they grow, the more animals they potentially can hunt. And yeah, that, that's not fun at all. And I'm sure that I did lose some baby shrimplets, which, you know, it's very sad, but I see the population is growing, so that's good. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. And I hope you've enjoyed this and you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe for more videos. I'll try to post a little bit more often. There's a lot going on in the background, but I have some more videos for you guys coming soon about the shrimp rack, about my bettas and how I managed to save Johnny, if you remember my betta fish. And yeah, with that said, stay tuned. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.